Kobe Bryant expresses regrets over his relationship with Shaq, according to the big podcast with Shaq, which will be released on Monday. But the Mason and Ireland show on ESPN Radio in Los Angeles played an excerpt from the podcast. Take a listen. A lot of stuff was said out of the heat of the moment. I, 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 I guarantee I don't remember a lot of stuff that they said I, because I changed my thought process of, you know what, we won three out of four. What the hell are y'all talking about? This, this is not even really a story. Anything you want to take back, yeah. Kobe? Yeah, well, here's the thing, though. When you say them at the time, you actually mean. And then when you get older, you have more perspective, and you're like, holy shit, I was an idiot as a kid. You know what I mean? So to, to me, the most important thing was really just keep your mouth shut. Right, you don't need to go to the press with stuff. We keep it internal, and we, you know, we have our arguments and our disagreements. But I think um, having our debates within the press um, was something I wish would have been avoided. But it did kind of create this this whirlwind around us as a team with myself and Shaq and the press and media that just put so much pressure on us as an organization. Kobe, keeping it real there, Stephen A. What's going on here? Well, first of all, both uh, usually keep it real. I applaud them for doing the podcast together. It's long overdue, to be quite honest with you. Um, I I'm happy that they did it. That's number one. Number two, this relationship has been mended for the last couple of years. And the biggest impetus for it was Dwight Howard. And I want to be very, very careful because I like Dwight Howard. And I know that... You know, people might take it, you know, the wrong way, and use it as an opportunity to insult him or whatever. That's not what this is about. I'm just giving you some insight into what Kobe Bryant thinks. There is nothing that has happened in the career or the life of Kobe Bryant that gravitated him more to Shaquille O'Neal than Dwight Howard. Because after Kobe dealt with Dwight Howard, his respect for Shaquille O'Neal elevated exponentially. Kobe used to get so disgusted with Shaquille O'Neal, and I'll get to that in a second to break that down. But ultimately what it came down to is that Dwight Howard was somebody that wasn't sure he wanted to be in a Laker uniform, wasn't sure he wanted to stay in Tinseltown, and obviously was thinking about his brand, not just his basketball career, et cetera, et cetera. And in Kobe's eyes, did not prioritize winning nearly as much as he should have. So because of it, Kobe did not have a speck of the respect for Dwight Howard that he did for Shaquille O'Neal. And evidence of that was that TNT was doing a game. It was the Lakers with Dwight Howard in uniform. And I forget what it was, whether it was a regular season or playoff game, Skip, forgive me. But Kobe had somebody go out and get Shaq and asked Shaq to come to the locker room. And Shaq came there, and Kobe just spilled his guts about how much respect he had for Shaquille O'Neal, how, you know, he was sorry that things ended up this way. He's not accepting culpability, please don't get me wrong, totally, because Shaq did some things wrong too, which Kobe will never hesitate to say. But when he called him into the locker room, he was just letting him know there were some things about Shaquille O'Neal that when Shaq was his teammate, he didn't appreciate nearly as much as he should have. And he realized it once he had Dwight Howard. Now we get back to Kobe and Shaq. Kobe's rookie year, that loyal, Loyola Marymount, or wherever the hell it was, where they were practicing, whatever. You heard the stories about how Shaquille O'Neal slapped him. Kobe was like, no, he tried to slap me. He missed. You know, and he didn't back down one bit. That's what Kobe's quick to tell you. You speak to a lot of people, Kobe's no punk. And the fact that Shaq even attempted to do that, from that moment forward, they were going to have a problem. Because Shaq is like, I'm Superman, Batman, I'm the big brother, you the little brother. Kobe wasn't trying to be anybody's little brother especially of a dude that tried to slap him. So because of it, Kobe's the kind of dude. He's as real as it gets. He ain't always right. Sometimes he's too damn sensitive. Sometimes he's very aloof and doesn't give a damn. But let me tell you something. He's very, very big on two things, respect and loyalty. Now, when the loyalty part, that's a later thing, but earlier, it's about respect. And when Kobe felt like he was disrespected, he never forgot that. And he held on to the fact that Shaq tried to do that to him. 
and never, ever back down from any kind of confrontation with Shaq from that moment and never let it go. No matter what the championships that took place, no matter the trials and tribulations, whatever the case may be, Kobe's attitude. There was a time when Kobe hated this man. If Shaq was on fire, Kobe wouldn't have spit on him. That's how bad it was. And to be quite honest with you, even though Shaq doesn't tend to feel that way uh, about anybody, there was a point where Shaq felt that way about him too. But ultimately, Shaq looked at his greatness and also Shaq looked in the mirror and said, there were things that I could have done better because that inner circle that Shaq has, that click, the Mark Stevens of the world, the Mark Uncle Jerome's of the world, his, 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 his late daddy, the, you know, the sergeant, his mama, everybody. They have a profound influence on Shaq. And they used to look at him and say, look, man, yeah, we know Kobe, he can trip, he can be, you know, we understand that, but you weren't right either on some occasions. And there were things you could have done better. And there were moments where you could have been the bigger man, which is why on Martin Luther King's holiday years ago, Shaq went as a member of the Miami Heat and he shook Kobe's hand because he wanted all of that to die down. So it's, 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 it's errors on both sides. There was a time when they literally hated each other. Then they grew up, recognized how ridiculous this had gotten, grew out of it, but where their relationship got considerably better to the point where they could pick up the phone and rap with one another and talk with one another, joke with one another, et cetera, et cetera, was after Dwight Howard. Because after Kobe had Dwight Howard, from everything that I've been told, his respect for Shaquille O'Neal elevated exponentially. And if you recall, there were times when Shaq has not hesitated to call out Dwight because he was like, I know what Kobe needs and you ain't giving it to him. And Kobe respected that too. You know, I would advise you to write a book on all this because I, no. think, I think you just read the audio version of the book to us right here on this show. I mean, you, I would never you just do, broke I, it all down. I, I would never, ever, ever do anything like that without players' full commission, full permission and consent. It's that simple to me. I would okay. never. I did think there were things that I know. Obviously, you know, I know about both. I will never reveal without their permission. Well, maybe you never. could do the as told to version. By if Stephen they would a. both Smith. have, they would both have to come to me and ask me to do it. I'm doing fine. I'm successful without all yeah, of that. I'm good. Okay. They need to cut. If they came, my, only if they came my way and asked me. Okay. So your bottom line to what you just told us is that Dwight Howard's many deficiencies finally forced Kobe to appreciate and miss what he had in Shaquille O'Neal. Correct. That is correct. It's not the only thing, but that is a major thing, yes. Okay. My two cents from a distance was always that in the end, young Kobe, remember, six and a half years younger than Shaq, did help run Shaq out of Los Angeles. Is that fair to say? Yes, in the sense that Dr. Jerry Buss went to Kobe because Shaq was looking for a $100 million deal. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Buss looked at Kobe and told Kobe, I'm going to hand the reins to you. I don't want to pay Shaq this money. I'm going to give you the franchise. Can you handle this? And Kobe gladly said yes at that time because Kobe wasn't particularly fond of being Shaq's teammate. That is true. It wasn't Kobe going to Dr. Buss and saying, I want Shaq out of here. It was Dr. Buss saying, I don't want to pay Shaq this money. I'm going to hand you the franchise. And Kobe having this huge smile because he didn't mind it at all. And, and by the way, Dr. Buss and or Kobe, they were right in their instincts at that point because Shaq was becoming an aging player. I think we saw him decline a little bit in Miami and on into all the rest of his stops. Only because of his physical condition. One other important nugget to point out. One of the biggest problems Kobe had with Shaq, Kobe is a workout warrior. Kobe trains, Kobe wakes up at 5.30, I, Kobe gets this. it in or whatever, and he would tell Shaq, come on, boy, let's go, let's do this, let's do this, come on, big fella, let's do this, and literally would turn around and walk into the training room and Shaq would have two Big Macs. I agree. 
Because it would drive I'm Kobe crazy. Because it would drive him crazy. You know and I know what the great Kareem Abdul-Jabbar did into his 40s because he took such great care of himself. He was still a force at age 40 and Shaq wasn't. Shaq declined because he he didn't commit to beating Father Time the way Kareem did at you know, obviously seven. What was Kareem? Seven, two, or three? Seven, maybe even more than that. That was Shaq's. Yeah. That was Shaq's lone Achilles heel. It walking was. around with those three hundred and fifty pounds. So it was hard for him to be religiously convicted I'm with to you. his conditioning. Okay. But he, he, his game never failed. So here's my takeaway. That's true. My takeaway from what I've heard, just snippets of this podcast. I'd love to hear more of it, and we will, I guess, on Monday. Yep. <laughs> Shaq has graduated. He has become a full-fledged TNT commentator and a pitch man and, and a superstar entertainer in, in, and of, in his own right. So he has completely let this go. It's like I can't even remember what that was because he's gone on to his second career. But Kobe was very interesting in the snippet that I heard because he said, no, when I said those things, I meant what I said at the time, but now that I've grown older, he's just turned 37 years of age, he says, I look back and say, holy bleep, I was an idiot when I was a kid. So, so Kobe has had a revelation in maturity, which is I, I highly appreciate. Because I, I've had a few of those in my life where you look back and say, "We all have." Well, what was I thinking? <laughs> what what was I have. doing? Why did I hang on to that for so long? It wasn't worth it. And again, both of them, in very different ways, have arrived at peace. Hmm? Peace, brother. That's where well, they it's are. Not, it's, it, it's it's not just peace. It's an appreciation and the part that they won't expound upon, if not. I dare say not even admit is regret. Yeah. If Kobe some. Bryant and Shaquille O'Neal, if they didn't have such friction, if they were a collaborative force off the court as much as they were on the court, because on the court, they were a collaborative force. Off the court, they were a divided, dysfunctional sure. bunch. Okay? So you had two factions. And really, it was one faction because everybody flowed. With Shaq, because Kobe, I mean, listen, man, Kobe, Kobe's a solo artist, man. Yeah. Kobe does his own thing. Shaq is the kind of person, you you know, Shaq is, he's, he's, a, he's a party waiting to happen and <laughs> everybody's invited. So, you know, he's very personable. He's relatable and cats flocked to him. More importantly, when it came to dealing with Kobe, I can't tell you how many teammates came to Shaq. And Shaq looked like the bad guy because he was the one that stepped up and confronted Kobe and acted like it was him when, in fact, it was a whole bunch of teammates that were sitting there talking about him. I'll tell you a quick story, Skip Bayless, to the point how bad it got one time, Skip and Molly. There was one time when there was, if you recall, there was a, uh, uh, there was a game when Kobe Bryant wouldn't shoot the basketball or something like that. It was, it was something along those lines. Mm -hmm. And there was stuff in the paper about how teammates felt he had literally thrown a game or did something. Kobe walked into the locker room to each and every single individual in a Laker uniform, used the MF word and said, mf -er, did you say this? One by one to every locker room with the article and said, did you say this? Did you say this? Did you? I mean, everybody, including Shaq and proceeded to cuss everybody out and told them all oh, you can kiss as you know what whatever the case may be and he walked out kobe was he ain't just fearless on the court man this dude is he's on another level especially when he gets ticked off and i'm telling you the graduated process is that again with all the friction that exists ultimately what it came down to is that he realized the animosity that he truly harbored was essentially unnecessary. Mm -hmm. Because after he was with Dwight Howard, he thought about the team he once had and was like, these are issues and problems we never had. I should have appreciated it more. Mm. Yeah. And Shaq is of the mindset, I should have appreciated you more too. And that's why they are where they are. Mm -hmm. Two different I, I, I said Shaq versus Kobe by Stephen A. Smith. Right? I want to see it in my bookstore soon.
We got a little excerpt yeah. there, but we, yeah. we need they, more from they you. They have to come to me. Steve I would never I, do it on my own. And obviously appreciate what they accomplished. Last team to three, Pete, back in 2000, 2002. So uh, their beef is squashed. As for the NFL, that beef, not so much. Who's putting the commissioner, Roger Goodell, in check and why? Find out next.